So the Eagles were on the doorstep of winning a Super Bowl. It did not happen. There's been some speculation they could be losing both their coordinators to head coaching jobs in Arizona and Indianapolis. But the trouble for Philly does not stop there. Is that correct, Brady Quinn? That's correct. And, and, and I shouldn't you know, say it as trouble. Look, Howie Roseman has done as good a job as any executive in the NFL of being able to rebuild a roster. We talked about, hey, you know, their last Super Bowl team, which was, what, six years ago, the 2016 uh, year? Yeah. They had seven starters still on the team from that standpoint, which is, is actually pretty remarkable. In, in most people's minds, they hear, oh, that's not that many. Uh, six years after to have seven players, starters that are still on the roster, it actually is pretty legit. So kudos to him for the job that he's done <clears throat> and being able to maintain those guys but also build out around them. But here's the problem. So I think we'd all agree they're going to have to pay Hurts, right? Yep. Yeah. So he's going to get a monster deal. That's going to take up a significant portion of their, of their salary cap, uh, depending on the, the, the structure of it. <clears throat> but here's what you're looking at having to move on from on defense. <clears throat> Starting D-tackle, Fletcher Cox. Defensive end, Brandon Graham. D-tackle, Javon Hargrave. <clears throat> James Bradbury at cornerback. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who started at safety for them. Uh, Marcus Epps, who also played a bunch and at times started for them at safety. T.J. Edwards, their inside linebacker. Linval Joseph, Robert Quinn, and Dominican Sue, all guys who they signed on during the season. All those guys are unrestricted free agents. <clears throat> That's just defensively. Jason Kelsey, their starting center, future Hall of Famer, could retire, but either way, he's unrestricted free agent. You've then got Isaac Suamalu, who's their starting guard, uh, right guard. He's also an unrestricted free agent. Running back Miles Sanders, unrestricted free agent. And then guys like Boston Scott, Zach Pascal, uh, all, all unrestricted free agents. So the point I'm trying to make is when you look at this roster and the fact of this team trying to build back up to get back to another Super Bowl, it's drastically different compared to the Chiefs who just won. The Chiefs' biggest offseason concern and consideration is Orlando Brown, their left tackle. He's up to be a free agent. Outside of that, it's, all right, Juju Smith-Schuster is a free agent, Michael Hardman, Jarek McKinnon. That's about it. Everyone else is under contract. I mean, Chad Henney is, is retiring, so you might need to find a backup, a guy who come in and help you if Mahomes gets hurt. But that's it. So, you know, Travis Kelsey's under contract for three more years. Patrick Mahomes is under contract for nine more years. It's just an entirely different scenario for the Eagles. Not only one having to pay Hurts, which, by the way, is a good problem to have when you've got a, a quarterback who's displayed himself to be one of the better quarterbacks in the league and your starter and franchise quarterback, but you've got a ton of potential turnover on this roster. And so it, it might take some time to build this back up again, like we saw the last time Philly was able to get to a Super Bowl to get back to and a chance to win another one. Like Kansas City's been navigating these waters for a couple of years now. Well, uh, another thing that you can leverage as Kansas City is getting a quality receiver at a legitimate, affordable price. Like, so if, if that's Juju they want to try to bring back. A one-year deal, guys. Agency, Who the hell wouldn't want to play Whatever there? it is, you can bring guys back because you did it without Tariq Hill. So you've basically now – set a a precedence that you know don't come in here trying to get no crazy money because we don't necessarily even need to pay you that you know we let Tariq Hill go be paid and everybody thought that that would change the trajectory of this team and it seems as though as long as they have uh, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey everyone else y'all just y'all fit in like make sure you fit in and if you fit in you come here and you'll win It'll be the Patrick Mahomes, the Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey um, way. That that it's now the their way, right? And, and you're and you're not lo- losing Steve Spagnola. You know, you might lose Eric Bieniemy. He's potentially looking to go to Washington. I know there's an offer for him to be on the commando staff as their OC. Huh. Um, the who staff? The commandos. Oh, okay. But but again, you've got Matt Nagy in place, who you know came back to coach quarterbacks and, and is kind of. You know, sitting there waiting to get another shot to get back in that OC position. So I think you're you're prepared for that if it happens. Whereas as, as you just mentioned, reports are Gannon staying in Arizona to interview with the Arizona Cardinals. You'd have to think they've waited this long to to be able to talk with him and potentially hire him as the guy. Um, and then on, on the other side, you've got you know uh, Shane Steichen, their OC for Philly, who looks to be the at least reportedly the top candidate for the Colts job. And so then Nick Sirianni has got to start all over again. Now they've got a quarterback coach. who's pretty highly sought after in Brian Johnson. Um, You know, he's a guy who I think could elevate up into that spot. 
But again, he's green as far as play calling ability. And, and you don't know if you're going to go through some growing pains there. I, I just think it's a really interesting situation the Eagles find themselves in. But if anyone can do it, um, Howie Roseman can. You know, the way he's built up this team, this organization has been pretty incredible. And and also just the reality, the Super Bowl hangover is a real thing. Like we can people can scoff at it and say, well, you know, but this time it's different. OK, well, Cincinnati got back to an AFC championship game, but they weren't able to get past. New England was the last team to do it. It just, you know, and you, I mean, the NFC, I would say, is a lot more easier to navigate than the AFC. But. I just I think this was the year and I think Philly probably knew it because look at some of the moves that they did make. They brought in people, you know, when they went out and got aggressive and, and traded for Robert Quinn and stuff like this. They were going for it this year because I think they realized we've got to pay Jalen Hurts eventually. Let's try and make this happen while we have the chance. You had all sorts of things go your way leading up to the Super Bowl, the injury to the 49ers. You got the Giants for a third try, and, and the Giants were no match whatsoever. And that game was there at halftime for the taking. Everything was going in that direction. And then the second half, that was it. Just like they, and, and still there were opportunities there. I just, if I'm an Eagles fan, I look at this and go, this is a blown opportunity for us. Like, this is a blown chance for us to win a Super Bowl. And now you pay Jalen Hurts. And what's that? What, is, what are we looking at for Hurts? What do you think? Like 50 million he's going to get a year? I mean, it's going to be yeah, the I mean, next that's, monster that's deal. Poor. Yeah, I get it. And, and this is always the, the tough conversation to have, right? Is no matter what you think, where you rank Jalen Hurts amongst the quarterbacks in the NFL, what they're getting paid, he's the next guy up. You know, it, it, it's what it costs for a gallon of gas. It's, it's what it costs for, you know, a gallon of milk. You're, you're going to pay the price when you need it, and that's what the Eagles have. So, uh, you know, he'll probably average somewhere around $45 million a year, if not north of that. That would be my guess. Um, I don't think this thing will get contentious. I don't think that the Eagles want it to. So we'll, we'll see what the n- final numbers look like. I always look for guarantees. Um, then the average annual value. Those are the two things that I'm, I'm kind of keeping an eye on. And after the season he had, he's worth it. He's worth every penny of it. Because if he, if he doesn't suffer the injury, he's the MVP of the league. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think if he, if he doesn't miss those games because of the injury, he's, he's the MVP of the league, and he was fantastic last night. So. Well, he was the runner-up. Yeah. And runner-up to the guy that made him a runner-up last night. That's not, that's not a loss. In your year, I know it's a missed opportunity, and I'll agree with you because I thought the better team was Philadelphia. But that's something that, again, if if they can navigate all the things that that Q threw out there, this is a team that could possibly be good for a, a, a long, extended amount of time if they have all you know if they have good coaching for one. You hate to hear it that they may lose that because it's like you you want to see the continuity and the experience play out. The, these were inexperienced Super Bowl coaches from top to bottom. And and then for me, you know, to, to see them possibly be able to bring back, you know, some of these guys. I mean, you got your, your wide receivers positions shored up pretty well. Now, you know, we didn't bring up Goddard, you know what I mean? So – between that hit them, AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, that's a that's a damn good. I mean, if you can, can but, to work with, but there's a lot of ifs and buts well, that's connected to what listening to what what they have to do to to maintain that team. So Smith, though, you're a year away from having to to start talking about an extension. Yeah, you know, and what that's going to look like depending on you know how much he's he's going to ask for and his impact on it. So it's like I said it, again. Howie Roseman has navigated as well as anyone, I think, in the NFL. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that you know he's going to be able to figure out a way. It's just it's hard to keep it all together and be able to consistently make runs. And what's so impressive about Brett Veach and what they've done in Kansas City is they've found those building block pieces, and it's Patrick Mahomes, it's Travis Kelsey, it's Chris Jones. You can maybe even say the case is it's Frank Clark, and then they've built out around them. And that's why I think the Orlando Brown Jr. piece is going to be huge. Yeah. And getting that left tackle solidified. And once that's done, you've got your five pieces. And they're able to – if they can continue to draft the way they've done and get that sort of production and talent out of Trent McDuffie and Brian Cook and Josh – or you know Jalen Watson and Josh Williams and George Karloftis and Pacheco and all these guys, right? I mean, even, even though Creed Humphrey and, and you know uh, Trey Smith, you know, not rookies, but – um, if they can continue to draft that way, 
and those guys are all hits, like it's incredible to see what they're capable of doing for a long time.